This film is just a little insight into the perception of lead required for good to high birds. We have only included shot birds where shot string is visible. Stay tuned for further enlightening footage. Please subscribe and comment to Dave Carey Shooting. This will help us gain a better understanding of what you, the viewer, wants to see. Today we're going to do a bit of uh, slow-mo uh, with the camera just to try and show people the lead on some of these birds. And not every bird is, is suitable for, for the slow -mo. it's got to be right in the sky. So we've got to, it's got to be the right picture so people can see the actual shot. I think the sky is actually perfect for you today. You should be able to see the shot cloud going to the bird. This first bird is more or less straight on. 35 yard to 40 yard. What I noticed was a flicker of the wings. That tells me he's still trying to gather pace. As you can see, he has just set his wings when I take the shot. About four foot of lead is required. Second bird is behind and beyond the next gun. So 50 to 65 yards away. I can see he's just set his wings again but not quite turned downwards so six to eight foot of lead on this one more or less straight lined him and it was a good kill if you noticed i fired quite quickly on a 70 to 75 yard bird straight after i missed it way behind my position wasn't right because i turned for my own birds then noticed this one and decided to have a hurried pop at it no chance because I never got into position. Onto this third bird, more or less the same lead as the first one. About 40 yard up, four or five foot of lead and a good kill is the result. I'm well bloody uh, clothed up today. Got my thermals on the lot. But it is bloody cold and it's biting uh, that bit of wind now. But all oh, these days make good pheasant days. They seem to fly a lot better, especially this time of year. They've, they've been shot at a few times now and uh, they know how to escape. They're not the easiest of birds this, this time of year. But we'll see what we've got to come. This uh, second driver. I've missed the first bird out actually, rushing it. And then I get caught out in a flush. I pulled onto a bird that was about 30 yards up and killed it. Sometimes this can happen as you rush to get the gun back into the flush and without thinking pull onto the first bird in the line of fire. Anyway, I quickly pull onto something more suitable with the second battle and had a good kill giving the second bird about six foot of lead. The third bird is much further away, above the tree line, still flapping to gain speed. I caught him just right about 10 or 12 foot of lead. If he had set his wings, I would have stuck another three or foot of lead on him. But if you watch carefully as well, I quickly get onto a partridge, requiring the same amount of lead. People keep saying that you don't need as much lead on a partridge but well down to one thing you've got to learn that speed and that partridge was moving after that good partridge i get a pheasant about 55 60 yards away overled it with the first shot and you can tell this by the way the bird braked then turned slightly i carefully measure him again as a crosser and give the required amount of lead about eight to ten foot a few minutes later, I get sight of a nice 40 yarder to my right. But behind him and in front is a monster. I decide to save two shots for him and let the 40 yarder go. I notice he has only just set his wings. He will not be on a downward trajectory yet. He needs plenty of lead though, and I give him about 12 to 15 foot. I cut him good with the first battle, and it's a very good kill. 
After this monster, I finish off with a good long partridge that needed 12 to 15 foot. They definitely needed this because of the speed it was going. This is, this is uh, our youngest member of the picking up team. And she loves every minute of the countryside, doesn't she? She's a little Mia. Mm. Remember, remember her from last year, little baby in arms, and now she's picking up. <laughs> Got to be the youngest picker up in the country. <laughs> aren't you, girl? You're gorgeous as well, aren't you? <laughs> Third drive, I got a clue what they call it, but we're in the middle of a wood. Get a few pigeon here. I'll have a shot at a few anyway. Bit of snap shooting here by the look of it, but we're going to try and get the slow mo on them. It's very, very short uh, sky that I've got here. We'll, we'll let him move forward a little bit. See if we can get a shot at the back, but I don't think we can. So I'll have to be shot as soon as we see these. It's small gap shooting here on birds about 40 yard to 45 yard. Very good sporting birds and nearly everyone with their wings set. These are the ones that look like they need no lead at all but you actually require double what you'll think. After the first pheasant that came straight across, I got two coming straight down the line, all shot at and missed already by three other good guns. I missed one with the first battle behind, about 35 to 40 yard up. Then I give the correct lead, which is about six foot, which is twice more than I thought he wanted. Very deceiving. Everything looking like they didn't need any lead at all. But these are the ones that catch people out. You imagine the people employed in the countryside, employed just in shooting sports alone. It's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? When you, when you start to think about all this area is sort of dependent the rural on economy. Yeah. When you look at that, yeah. farmers, landowners, yeah. shoot owners, country folk, yeah. have I done a bad job of looking after it? Have they no, it's beautiful. And I mean, I always encourage anybody that comes from abroad is to get into North Yorkshire and, and uh, go and stop in a local pub because we'll find out where everything is from local pub, won't they, really? You know. Followed uh, the owner of the shoot, Kev Joblin, he's fetched it up here. <coughs> what cock, we're not shooting what cock. I never shoot what cock anyway. That's not to say that uh, nobody else can shoot them. It's just a preference of mine. We're going to see if we can uh, get one or two here first before we move back down to our pegs. The first tool that came over, I got a great left and right. As you can see, the lead is about 10 to 12 foot, but I'm forced to shoot a little earlier as I have my back up to a tree-lined cliff. And if I took them any later, I would have been in an awkward position. So I decided that I've got to take these birds on, which proved successful. Straight after that, I've taken a long crosser that at first shot I go over the top and I've underled it. Then managed to correct the lead and give it about 10 to 12 foot on the second battle. Also dropping the bat a little bit and more in line with the bird, which leads to a successful kill. After six or seven shots, Kev's moves me back on peg and I'm about 50 yards from the flushing point. Although taking birds at the back that are further away, these birds have either just set their wings or just about to. You will see as I shoot a couple of crosses that are in fact closer but these needed more lead because they had set their wings. 
and got up to speed, so to speak. If you look at the others at the back, I'm just touching on the bird and gently moving in front, three to four foot. In conclusion, you must always try and read the speed whilst maintaining good line. Watch for little telltale signs of speed. If he flicks his wings, he is not quite up to speed. Not like the one that has appeared with wings already set. He requires more attention and definitely more lead. Whilst most of the birds shot on this film were fantastic birds, I did shoot a few 35 to 45 yarders to help the audience see the shot string better and to give you a clearer viewpoint of gun to bird. There are many variations of shots and later on in one of our films we will have the typical Welsh mountain pheasant screaming downhill at 70 to 80 yard up. This is some of the most difficult shooting you will come across. But here, at Dave Carey Shooting, we will try to show you how it's done. So stay tuned till next time.